Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the fifth video in the restoration of the Saab Stereo 1. The reason I'm happy is that I'm, I'm filming this at the end of this procedure, which has been incredibly, incredibly tedious. It's been, I've enjoyed parts of it, I've sworn through parts of it, and I'm going to punish you with the results if you are game. So uh, what I do here is I do the full FM. So the, uh, the FM IF, the FM RF alignment, a great disappointment on the stereo, but I'll let you, if you stay awake that long, I'll let you find out for yourself. This is happiness that this stage is done. That's why I'm smiling so much, not because someone's pulling faces in the background. They wouldn't do that. So if you've got an hour, I think it's actually more than an hour. If you've got an hour to spare, uh, if you've only got half an hour, I've got a trick for you. Put it on two times speed. Um, I actually sound more intelligent when you put me speaking faster. It, it's, it's not difficult, but it happens. And I hope you enjoy this. I hope this helps somebody, uh, you know, align one of these Sabers. They're fantastic radios. The result at the end, I've got to tell you, is really great. It's the procedure that's rather tedious. So, as I said, if you've got an hour to spare, enjoy. I believe everything is suitably set up for the uh, FM IF alignment at this point. And I'm going to follow the instructions by the letter or to the letter and see how we get along. I could do it in my usual way, which means that I could uh, improvise knowing what I'm supposed to be doing, as I've done in a few other instances. But because this is a special receiver, this is a stereo FM receiver, the first stereo FM tube receiver that I'm working on, I'm going to follow the instructions. And what I've done in the meantime, as I normally do, is I've gone and done component checks and component replacements on the FM section. And surprisingly, I'll show you, this is all that resulted. Three components. And in fact, only two of them needed replacement, which is the capacitor and that little resistor over there, 8.2K. It was way off. This one, was replaced, it's also an 8.2K, and it was replaced because it was far out from that one. So these two resistors, I'll show you on the schematic now, need to be pretty much matched because this is part of the uh, ratio detector balancing circuit. You gotta have them pretty much matched. The exact values are not that important. If this was 9K, if this was 10K, they'd probably be fine, but they need to be matched. So this is the sum total of the replacements. This is what I've set up ready to do the alignment. I uh, am going to show you where these signals go to and come from that we are injecting and measuring because that's what the instructors to do. And then I'll go and show you what the instructions are. First thing you'll notice is that there's quite a bit of action going on down there in that uh, output point. There are four signals we need from there. Two of them is uh, actually going to give us the voltage across that ratio detector capacitor. That's going to a voltmeter. Giving, giving us, will be giving us a uh, DC voltage, which is relative to the strength of the signal going through, used for the alignment. The other one is actually for, to measure the uh, balancing current or balancing voltage of the ratio detector diodes. And that's actually a microammeter that we have set up as well, connected to two other points over there. And I'll be explaining that very shortly. Now, the other point is this over here, which is a little bit more confusing. You probably know that normally when I couple the signal to the uh, input section of the FM, I do it across that tube over there, lightly coupled. I put a, a coil around it. In this particular case, they give us a point where we're supposed to inject the signal. And they tell us to inject the signal between chassis. So one point of the signal goes to chassis. And the other one, they tell us to connect across the bottom, the lower end of that capacitor, that trimmer capacitor. Now, because the only point that I have access to is the screw at the top, I believe that is the, bo the bottom point. You know, usually the, uh, the tunable part is one side of the capacitor and the other one is inaccessible. So I'm assuming that is it. And that's where I'm connecting the 10.7 megahertz uh, signal to. And here we've got our actual signal, 10.7 megahertz. That's the IF frequency. I'm going to apply FM modulation I'll be applying a tone just to make sure that everything's working. And they tell us to apply its FM modulation. I'm applying 25 kilohertz deviation at 600 hertz just to change the tone. And the signal I'm feeding in here is 
well, I'm going to put it at minimum amplitude here. The lowest mine provides is 1.4 millivolts RMS. Therefore, I'm taking it out of there, putting it into the uh, switched attenuator. It's also got a DC blocking capacitor here, which uh, serves the purpose well. And that's the signal that I'm going to feed out. I will then be adding or removing attenuation steps. At the moment, I've got no attenuation. Simply want to see whether I get the tone. They tell us to set the tuning to about 95. Now, I've got a problem with 95. There's actually a pretty strong station to 95, so I'm going to put it up a little bit more. Get the volume up. At this point, I haven't uh, input the signal yet. So all I'm going to hear is hiss. There we go. Hiss, and I'm going to tune out of a station. See, there's 95. Don't want that. Let's leave it over there. And now I'm going to drop the volume somewhat and activate my signal. I don't know if I need attenuation or not. That's why I'm going to drop the volume. Oh, I can hear it. There's my tone and it's actually pretty weak. So I'm going to increase the tone. Yep, there's the tone. There's something they tell us to do. They tell us to inject the tone. They don't tell us what level it is, but they tell us to then unscrew that capacitor till we get rid of all the hiss and we only hear the tone. I don't want to do that. I actually prefer to increase the amplitude of the tone. I don't think, I don't think that we have an AGC problem here. Um, let me think. Do we? No, I don't think we do. So instead of messing with that capacitor, which is, has been set, I'll leave it at that and just listen to the tone over here. Now that also gives us a voltage on the one multimeter. Let me show you. There's our voltage. Now I can change the amplitude as much as I like. Doesn't make any difference, which means I'm going to put it down very close to zero. But if I change the amplitude of the input signal, see that? So that's giving us the indication that we want. And I'm going to leave it about there. I'm at 10 volts. So we are reading about, uh, what are we reading here? About three volts. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, they sometimes tell you to try and bring it down to about two volts. So I'm going to do that. We've got it at about two volts. Let's start at about two volts. That is, where are we? That's over there. So we're at about two volts. RMS, that's what we're reading across that uh, the capacitor. Now let me show you on the schematic what it is we're talking about. Here we have the uh, the usual layout, which is important for us because it tells us where all the coils and capacitors are. And if we go down here, we get the start of the FM alignment. They tell us to press UK, which is FM. They tell us to connect a VTVM with a 10 volt scale between point X and X dash. See here, there's our X, there's our X dash. So first and second socket pins over there. They then tell us to connect a zero center microammeter in series with a 100 kilo ohm resistor to test point Z and Y. So Y we know is the chassis connection, so it's ground. So I've connected one side there and Z is that one there. So one, two, three, four on the outside. There's our Z. I put a, a resistor in there. Way I connected through a resistor to the other side of the microammeter. And now let's see what it is we're actually doing. You see, we've got this usual thing over here, and you'll see that I've got those uh, three components that I've swapped out there, one, two, three. But they tell us, if we look down here, there's our X, there's our X dash. Let's follow that. We follow X up, we follow X dash up as well. If we go up here, first points we come to, there it is, there's our X dash, and that comes to the bottom of that capacitor over there. That's the capacitor I've replaced, the electrolytic. The top X is over here, which is the top of that capacitor. And there's also a, a jumper that's actually in the circuit. It's wired in. This is obviously to set up something else. It doesn't include, doesn't mention this at all in the instructions. So we leave that alone. So we connect, we're connecting the voltmeter across this capacitor, measuring this voltage, which will be a negative voltage, depending on the strength of the signal that's being uh, detected over here. Now. That is, as per the textbook, nothing unusual about that. Now, they also tell us to measure between Y and Y, which we know is uh, chassis, and Z. Now, Z is over here, 
and Z, what are we measuring here? We've got, if we follow Z in here, there's another Z to the top, but let's follow in here. We've got two resistors over here. Uh, actually, if we just follow it through there, that's a very high resistor. So we follow it in there and it goes through there and it comes out here. Now this point coming out here is actually our, our audio signal. And it has to be, as far as DC is concerned, it should be zeroed. In other words, there should be zero volts. In other words, there should be, well, there should be zero uh, current, which is why we use a microammeter. Now, a microammeter is basically a voltmeter with no series resistor on it. It's got very low resistance on it. So it's going to measure very, very small voltages. Any small voltage, either positive or negative, is going to go through here and it's going to be detected on that microammeter. We put a 100 ohm resistor in there so that we actually sort of isolate ourselves from the signal itself and we don't drop the amplitude of the signal. So now we know what we're doing. We're just going to balance this ratio detector over here, which is the normal step that you do. You sometimes do it at the end. You sometimes do it at the beginning. Here, I believe they're doing it right at the beginning. So let's have a look at the instructions again. So here we go. IF alignment at 10.7 megahertz. Connect the signal generator and modulated output through a one nanofarad capacitor. I've got a DC blocking cap in there anyway. To the low side of C106 and the chassis. The low side of C106. And detune C106 until the noise voltage disappears on the voltmeter. You set the receiver to 95. As I mentioned, I can't set it to 95 because I've got a station there. So I set it to 96. Doesn't matter. But... They do tell us to, to set it to the bottom of C106. Now, C106, if we look at the FM front end, this is C106 over here. The lower end, the bottom end of C106 is actually this point over here. And I'm not sure whether that, I'm not actually sure how these things are drawn, whether that is ground or rather the lower end, the screw end, or whether that is a screw end. But... Either way, I'm getting the signal coming through. So I think by screwing it or by connecting it to the screw end of that tuning cap, that trimmer, I think that I'm in the right position. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm feeding the IO frequency straight in, straight into this triode, okay? If I feed it straight into this triode, I'm doing a better job than actually lightly coupling it to the triode, which is what I normally do over here, right? Lightly couple it with a coil, a little self-wound coil around the, the tube to capacitively couple it. This is a better way of doing it. And normally, normally we don't have access to a convenient point inside this IF or this uh, front end FM can. Fortunately, here we do. I'm not going to mess with this. I'm not going to detune it and tune it back later because, quite honestly, I don't think it's necessary. And then we'll have quite a few things to adjust. And they tell us what to adjust. Here's the first one. The ratio transformer, I have transformer 4, the ratio detector. You adjust coupling. Sub so again, you unscrew the coupling and then you adjust the primary and adjust the secondary. Now, the difference here is the primary circuit, L81, you adjust it to a max voltage on the voltmeter that we've set up. And the secondary circuit, L383, you adjust it till you zero the microammeter. Now, what is that doing? As I mentioned, it's pretty normal. 381 is simply the primary. So you adjust that till you get the maximum voltage across that capacitor. And then what you do is you adjust this guy over here till you get that zero volts or zero current on the microammeter coming out of this point over here. So again, not very unusual. The only difference is that I normally do this step last. So I start at the front of the radio and I sort of end at the end, but nothing wrong with that. So we're going to see what else they tell us to do. Literally, that's all we need to do. So let's set that up and get going. Okay, let's start with this. I'm going to put the tone on just so that we can hear it. And if we look at the scope, we can actually see it. And as you can see, it's not quite well aligned. The one bottom end is slightly off. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to change the frequency. I'm at 10.7, 10.69 gets worse, 10.7, 7.1, 7 7.2, see what's happening? 7.3, that is really going up. So 
this thing is not perfectly balanced left and right, but anyway, 7.4, 0 0.74, 10.75, 10.76, then it goes down. So the peak is actually at about 10.8. So this thing is badly aligned. We're going to go back to 10.7 and we're going to put this thing on dummy load so we don't have to listen to it. Let's try four rooms. Okay. And now I'm going to start by critically decoupling this guy. I don't see much change on the meter, but we have to adjust this one to a peak and there seems it was at a peak. That's one way. That's the other way. If we go through the center, that's our peak. And now we need to adjust this guy till we get zero milliamps. This thing is actually negative DC, positive DC. I've got this on, what have I got this on? I've got this on 100 microamps. I'm going to put it on 10 microamps. See what happens when I turn it. If it goes past the zero the wrong way, I can change the polarity of the meter. Oh, that's going up. And that goes down negative. So that indeed is the best this will be. I'm looking at trying to get the meter in place. I've got this on 10 microamps. So the lowest reading, and that's perfectly set. Okay. And we still got, if we look at the scope, we're still not quite there. So it means that um, some of the others are misaligned. It looks like that one was perfectly aligned, but some of the others are probably misaligned. I'm going to just remove the modulation. See what happens. Goes down, okay. But I'm going to now do the same thing. I'm just going to see if I need to increase the amplitude somewhat, just to get a better reading on there. It doesn't change much, and I don't understand why. I'm trying to see whether you're supposed to do this without modulation. So let's see what happens here. Let me put this on a lower rate reading. Uh, it's drawing it down. Whoops. some reason this thing is aligning at a different place that is indeed the max and now if I do the that goes that way there we go try modulation again I'm not getting anything I've aligned to the wrong one it seems Seems that I've aligned to the wrong one. Yep, there's two. There are two positions here. I don't see what's happening. Okay. That there is. Is it? No. I'm having a problem looking around the the meters. That seems to be it there. And that certainly made a difference to the amplitude here. Although, as we can see, it's still not quite rid of that bottom distortion, but perhaps we'll get that on the others. Okay. If I take that away, you see, this is what gets me. You're supposed to do this without modulation and I'm not getting what I expect. If I align it there, I get no signal going through. If I align it properly, whoops, wrong one. Let me try it. This is where it should be. I'm going to leave it there and see what happens when we do the others. Okay, let's see what we've got to do next. 
So what we've done is that we've aligned, we've tuned that one and we've tuned this one to give us the least deflection. As I said, I'm a little bit confused as to why modulation makes it appear in a different place, but at the end I'll probably go back and just make sure that it's giving me the best sine wave possible, because that's ultimately what you're trying to do. When you align this guy, you're trying to balance the diodes and uh, th these coils, this circuit here, to give you the least distortion at the output. And of course, if that's what I'm trying to do, I want the least distortion coming out here. I don't know what, I don't really care what the micrometer says to me, as long as I see a perfect sine wave on the scope. That's more important to me. So the next step is IF transformer 3. So down here. So we have to adjust the coupling, coupling subcritical. Remember, notice they didn't tell us to put this back up to critical, okay? They don't tell us to put it up. They say subcritical, but they don't tell us to make it critical. Which leads me to believe that there's probably more adjustments on the circuit, which means I'm going to leave that uh, micrometer there as well. So adjust coupling subcritical K81, 82. Both circuits L81, L82 to max. Repeat if necessary. And here it says adjust coupling critical to a max on. So you decrease. Adjusted non-critical, adjusted critical at the end. That makes sense. So we're looking at L8182. So we are looking at these guys over here, those three. There's the critical subcritical alignment, the coupling alignment over here. And then we adjust these two for max on the voltmeter. Right, and what are we doing here? We've done that one, and now we're doing 8182, which is this one here. So this one and this one. That makes sense. We're moving one step back in the chain and we're making sure that this thing is perfectly aligned. Let's get that done. All right, we're on to the next one now, and we need to adjust this guy subcritical, so we de-align that. That's the coupling. Let's see if I can get in there. All right, take off a bit there. Okay, now the other two for max. I don't think there's a problem which order you do it in. Whoa. Okay, that's a max. And the second one. Nope, can't reach it. Got to use the uh, chopstick. The kebab stick. Here we go. Okay. Eh, not much. There's a peak. Okay, actually just flip back. Why do you do that, dude? There we go. That seems to be a max now. We adjust the coupling to critical again. Oh, if I try and use this one. That's quite a change. Okay, that seems to be the max. Good stuff. Okay, that's another one done. So we finished that guy over there. Now we're doing IF Transformer 2. Again, same story, but we're using, uh, we're doing it to the 191, 192 set of coils. So subcritical, Adjust those two to a max, repeat, and adjust to max. So 192, 191, 192, which are they? There's 191, 192, the coupling screw, and we adjust these two to the max. So same story. And what exactly are we doing here? Well, going back to here, we have we did this first, then that one. And now we are doing... Uh, oh, <laughs> my bad. We're up here. I was lost. We're doing this one over here. And then the last one will be the one there. Okay, let's hit it. We're going to be adjusting that one and that one for a max. So far, so good. This one's a little tricky to get into, but I'll try with the kebab stick. Uncritical. That should do it. And now we adjust these two for a max. 
Not sure that the kebab stick is actually in there. Hmm. Damn, filming this and doing it is tough. Because the camera's in the way. Well, that can't happen. That's about the best I can do. And still have access. Let's see what I can do here. I think this uses a smaller screwdriver. Yeah, that should do it. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's a peak. Someone's messed with this or something's happened. That really has gone up. I'm going to decrease the amplitude of the uh, input signal. That's pretty amazing. Let's see what happens to the other one. Why would someone mess with this? Why would this be so... Whoa, I've got to decrease that amplitude again. In fact, I've got to put attenuation in now. Okay, that's that's a peak there. Go back to the previous one. That's a peak there. Okay, now I've got to adjust that to critical. That's going to go up again, I think. Not too much. I think that's about right. Okay, that made quite a difference. Good. And you know what? Since we're here and we know, I can tell you now, that the aligning the first IF transform is exactly the same. I'm going to just do the coupling alignment. Drop that a bit. Okay. And then I'm going to... I can't really see what I'm doing here because I'm leaning around the back, but hopefully... Oh, there's our peak. And now the other guy. Not much there. There's our peak. And now we align this guy to critical. Not much difference, is there? I think perhaps I should have done it a lot more subcritical than that. But anyway, that seems to be done. I don't know what we need to do next. It still carries on. We'll have a look. Told you there's more. You see, that's the one we've just done. It's identical to the previous one, so we don't have to worry about that. But there's still more. Here it goes back to IF Transformer 4, the ratio detector. Now we've done that at the beginning, right? And it tells us signal generator must now be frequency modulated, deviation 20 kilohertz. I'd use 25 when I was playing with it. Voltage between test points X and X dash should be about 10 volts. Okay, so we adjust the uh, amplitude of that signal till we get about 10 volts. Then it says tighten coupling of 381, 383 until the audio voltage at the output has fallen 10% below max. What are we doing here? We are flattening the end, I think. We are actually uh, widening the... Well, I think we're probably widening the, um, the bandwidth. Then it says adjust secondary circuit 383 to 0 on the micrometer. Yep, we still had to use that again. Primary circuit to max. Okay. Then they tell us to use amplitude modulation. Okay. Signal generator must now be 30% amplitude uh, modulation and adjust 301 to the minimum audio voltage. What you're doing here is you basically adjusting it for um, AM rejection, which is one of the functions of that stage. And then the primary circuit of 381, we're back to 381, are we? Yes. Primary circuit to max and secondary to zero. So this is all to do with... Um, Setting the bandwidth, I think, on the 10% below story. Tighten the coupling. This is when you tighten it. We had loosened it, okay? And I'll be watching the scope for that. 
secondary circuit. So you zero the micrometer, you max the voltage on the output on the um, yeah, okay, across the capacitor, then you do the amplitude mod. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. Let's see if I can explain it and do it at the same time. Okay, so now we definitely need, that should be 20, okay. I had 25, so 20. I've got a 600 hertz tone, we're good. Now I've got four volts, four millivolts RMS there. I'm not sure what I need. I'll have to check the meter and make sure that I get 10 volts, correct? We need 10 volts on that meter. Okay, I'll adjust that accordingly. Right, we're back to recording the two meters because we'll need to set the uh, micrometer thingy there. I'm going to put the modulation on. I can hear it. Put the, get rid of that, put it on dummy load. Now, what they tell us to do is to increase the amplitude till we get about 10 volts on there. And that is about 10 volts because, yep, I had it on 25 volts. So let's put it on 10 and drop the amplitude just a twitch so that we get about 10 volts. Okay. Not much needed uh, to drop there, but we've done that. Now they tell us to... They tell us to drop the, uh, to tighten this so that the audio level is actually 10% below. Now that's a bit weird. Remember, they didn't tell us to tighten this before, but I'm going to give this thing, I'm watching, I'm just watching on the scope there. 10 volts it is. All right. Is that right? Yep, that's correct. Now I need to tighten this so it actually drops and I'm watching the scope and it's actually going up. Coupling's going up to a maximum. The voltage there is about the same. I'm watching this on the scope and it's going up and then, good Lord. Oh, it's coming down now. Okay. Sorry, I can't show you this, but I really don't want to interfere with this right now. I'm just checking for a peak on the scope. You can see the meters down there I think is pretty much the same, not much difference. But I'm getting this to a peak and keep tightening it till it's about 10% lower. Is that right? I think that's about it. Okay, now what do they tell us to do? They tell us to set this to zero on the micrometer micrometer. So, oi, that is really gone crazy. Put that on a different range. That's down to zero. Let me take it to the lower range, 10 microamps again. It's flipped the other way. It's now on 10 microamps. Keep going, keep going, and that is near as damn it. On the zero, yes. Good. And then they tell us to do something else. They want us to do this primary again for max. Hell, it was there. Okay, that's good. Now they tell us to change the modulation to amplitude. Okay, let me see how I'm going to be able to show you that. All right, I've got a bit of a problem on how to show you this, but I've got signal generator set left the same as it was before, but I've, set, I've changed the modulation to AM, and I've got to put the volume all the way up, and I can sort of hear it. Let me put it on both sides. I can't even see it on the scope. It's very low, which means that the rejection is pretty good. Let me just try and... I can hear it, okay? I'm going to go to the modulation and give it more depth. Did they say 30% modulation? 30% modulation, yeah, that's what I've got. And I can just, just hear it. I can't see it on the scope or anything. And that's 301 over there. That little trim pot, which I'm trying to see without 
around the back of this thing and I don't want to get zapped so there's all sorts of restrictions on here damn can't do it okay seem to have it now I'm gonna listen to it oh that bit got worse that got worse that got worse it's exactly where it was that is the greatest let me put that off. That means that that uh, potentiometer has been set to the best AM rejection. That's another way of aligning this, uh, this whole ratio detector thingy. And I think we'll go look at the instructions, but I think we've done most of it now. And here we are. We've done this section now. We have done this. Now that means that we've aligned the IF. And the next step is the alignment of the tuner. They mean the RF. And here they say connect the VHF signal generator to the dipole socket. So now you're moving back to the antenna. Okay. And you adjust at 90 kilohertz, C111, which is the oscillator, and C106, which is the RF front end to max. And again, we are doing the same thing. We're measuring the same. Well, actually, when you're doing the oscillator, you're, you're adjusting on the dial where it's going to show up, and then the strength of the signal, the RF alignment, that part there, you check the meter. Okay, so it's at 90, C11, C106, at 100, L, inductors, 105 and 104, and at 95, 102. What are we doing here? Well, there's C11, C106, those are the two capacitors. One is the RF and one is the... Um, the uh, oscillator L104, L105, and then when you set it to the middle of the band, you do L102. Did I get that right? I think I got that right. And what you're doing is you're setting the, the tuning versus the uh, display and the front end circuits on the low end of the band and then at the higher end of the band. And then, of course, you are peaking one of the filters, one of the circuits, to give you a flat or as, as broad a... Um, a band pass as possible down there. And the schematic here tells us the same story. We have got C111 and 104. So that's there and there. So that'll be the oscillator circuit and that'll be the RF front end tuning to this coil over here. You're tuning that tank circuit. And then there's L105. That's again the oscillator at the top end. And L104, which is that tank circuit. So you've got two tank circuits. This one over here is the oscillator tank circuit. This one over here is the, uh, the RF tank circuit, which uh, determines which part of the band gets through this amplification stage here, RF amplification stage, which is what this triode is doing. And then the 104, is it? No, L102. Where's L102? L102 is here. And this is to ensure at 95 megahertz, at the middle of the band, that you have got this set to optimally pick up all the band from the beginning, from the bottom to the end, coming in from the antenna. So it all makes sense. No big mystery there. Now let's see just how easy it is to do it on uh, on the radio itself. I was trying to set this up, but I'm facing a bit of a dilemma. And that is that this signal is too strong. And I have a whole lot of attenuators here, as you can see. This is uh, at the minimum at uh, 88 dB microvolts. And then I've got a 10 uh, dB attenuator, 16 and a 15, so 31 dBs of attenuation. And I was still getting the signal far too strong over here. I could see it on the magic eye when I tuned in. This is actually tuned slightly out, but when I tuned in, see that? It just pegs the meter. And then I connected this up to my stepped attenuator up there, and I'm feeding that into the dipole. The problem is that, that this is a 75 ohm system. That is a 50 ohm system. So I'm messing this all up, and there is an easier way to do this, and I want to show you what that is. Let me show you the, the tone. You can hear it, okay? But if I just take this off, and I take this with a little wire on there, I've got this adapter here from, um, what is it, IEC to BNC. See that? Now what I can do, if I want to reduce the amplitude, I can't reduce the amplitude any further there. I can just move this away. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the uh, dipole antenna that I've got sitting up there. Let me put the sound off. I'm going to connect the dipole antenna in the back just as a dipole antenna. And I've just connected it over there. So now the impedance or the um, source that my radio is expecting is a dipole antenna, which is at the top there. And now what I can do, I can position this so that I get the right amplitude signal. Watch this. Uh, see that? Let's see if that's... I've got a very strong station right there. So it's still, it's still pegging, but if I move this away, I can get that down. Very strong station over here. I can move this sort of away, further away. I'm just wondering if I put the attenuator on here. Yeah, I probably can. Yep, I probably can. I can put an attenuator in here. Leave that like this. Let's put in a put in the 15 dB one. Which one is it? This one here. Yeah, that's certainly reduced the amplitude. That's the tone there, right by a strong station. But that's probably too much. Let me try 10. So that's at 90. 90. And I'm going to leave this on the bench here. And that's really where I'm getting it. At, at about 91. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride it to the left. And the way I do that, in fact, I'm going to increase the signal strength. And what I do is I just put it to the edge on the left edge. I know I've got to move left or down in frequency. So I put it right to the left where I'm hearing it. I've got to change, uh, what is it? 111, C111, which is the one on top here. And I'll keep turning gently to the left and following it with the signal so I don't lose it. So I'm going to actually increase the amplitude of the signal. Now, if I go slightly to the edge. Bloody hell, that station's strong. I'll have to see which way I move to get it stronger, to get it to move down. This will probably give you an idea of what I'm doing. Let's try that. 111 is that one there. Yeah. Actually going a bit too far. That's it there. And now I've got to do C106 for the greatest signal strength. And I'm looking at the meter on the edge there. You can just... Can you see that? I doubt it. We'll see what happens. Okay, I think you can see that. Oh, that is going well. I've got to decrease the amplitude, so I'm going to move the generator away a bit. That seems to be a peak. <laughs> I 
think I've got it. Man, that's annoying. Now they tell us to set it on 100. We'll put the volume up and try and find it on 100. Oh, it's a bit high. So I've got to bring it down to there. It's over there. They tell us to adjust L105, which is a bit of a strange one. It's actually that guy over there. And L104, which is in there, but you know, I can't see anything in there. What is actually in there? Well, that's the antenna. That's going to stay exactly as it is because I can't see it. I can't see it at all. So we have to adjust this to adjust the frequency. And I've got to do that with a fairly wide screwdriver of sorts. Let's see what I can use for that. Okay, this, this may work. All I'm doing, this is all connected to the chassis, so it shouldn't be a problem. I'm just tightening that, um, that wire pulley to the right position. Now, what I want to do is check the tuning. I'm hearing it. Again, there's another bloody station, but I need to follow it. Yeah, I'm heading the right direction. Nearly there. Yeah, there's a station at 100 exactly. So I don't even need the um, signal. Just a little bit more. Just a twitch more. That's exactly on 100. Okay, now I'm going to check that. Go back and forth a couple of times and check that the 90 is in place. And then I'll be satisfied. All right, with a bit of uh, backwards and forwards, let me show you what we've got. I've got it set to 90 on there. That is near as done it. I'm looking at the magic eye just over there. Sort of putting it on its maximum. That's at 90. I'm going to put 100 now. Of course, we could just go to the football game. There it is. Football game is actually weaker now. It's, it's a station I don't normally get to well, but I'm receiving it on this one. So I've aligned that perfectly. Now, let me tell you about 95. 95, they tell us to adjust L102. And while L102 looks pretty easy, but it's not, it's actually a thread. It's a screw thread that you have to somehow get a, 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 a nut, a driver in there and rotate it. And I'm not going to mess with that. It's the same with that other coil over there. The one I said I couldn't see. There is a thread down there. It's I don't know. You could try with some pliers. I think it's just going to cause more hassle than uh, than improvement. This thing is receiving incredibly well. Incredibly well. So I'm going to leave this as is. What do we have next? All right. So what we've got really is we've done... Uh, what have we done? We've done that one. We've done that one. We've not done that one because I don't want to mess with that um, thread inside there. Now it says cut off plate voltage of RF amplifier and solder R115. Increase the input voltage to about 0.5 millivolts. I can't do that because I don't have a precise enough um, signal source to be able to know exactly when I'm going to be feeding 0.5 millivolts to the antenna and adjust neutralizing capacitor 
with CC104 to minimum. I really don't know what that's doing. I'm not going to mess with that. This thing's receiving very well. Then you resolder R115. Uh, you just you had to unsolder it over here and then repeat one and two. That is it. I'm leaving it like that. And this is where my greatest, greatest disappointment comes in. Stereo indication. Adjust P302 for beat. I suppose it's best. Stereo indication. Input voltage 100 microvolts. Again, 100 microvolts I can't mess with. The only thing they tell you that you can do is to adjust a potentiometer. That is not what I expected. I thought this was going to be a really interesting uh, delve into the 19 kilohertz tone and... Oh man. Anyway, let's see what, what they're talking about here. We've been doing all this over here. By the way, 104. What they're telling us to do is to remove R115 which means you remove that voltage. That wouldn't be too difficult. That's on the outside. That's the B plus that's going into the front triode. So they want you to remove that supply and then you adjust this trimmer cap over here for best neutralization. I don't even know what you're supposed to look for when you adjust for neutralization. If you can tell me, go to the comments. And now what we're looking at is the FM stereo decoder plugs in here and they tell you to adjust for best indication with this trimmer pot. Well, yeah, stereo adjustment of stereo indication. I don't... Oh, this is not what I was expecting. I've, been, I've seen the stereo light going on and off there. Quite honestly, I really did not expect this. It's, it's quite a disappointment. And I guess I'm, I'm just going to leave it like that. I really, I've been seeing it flicker on and off. I'm going to go to a station that I know is stereo and see if I get stereo. And if it doesn't indicate properly, I guess I'll, I'll adjust the trimmer. Bloody hell. Where is it, by the way? Three, P302. There's P301. There's P302. And can I see it? Oh, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, it's on that bottom board next to the decoder. The decoder sort of goes in here. Not what I was looking for. You see this over here? This trimmer over here and that one over there? It actually is this rod that goes through the middle there and you, you adjust it so you're moving something along a thread. You have to rotate this thing and it's about probably about eight millimeters diameter. So I'd have to fit a, a long nose screwdriver in there and rotate one way or the other. And the chances of me messing something up are very, very big. So that's why I decided not to do that. Let's have a look at the stereo light just to see that it's working. What I can do is set this thing to send a stereo signal. I've been using mono signals all along because that's the way I prefer it with most of these. But I had mono. I set it to stereo. Hit it. RF on. See that? The stereo light is on. This thing's too bright. But the stereo light is on now. If I tune off, it goes off. There we go. Stereo light's on. So this is picking up stereo. I really don't know whether there's anything we can do about that decoder. I don't think so. Well, I'm actually quite disappointed, but there are um, some things you just can't get around. I thought those instructions continued. I thought, oh, we've got lots of instructions here. And then I realized that it continues on in French. This thing's got German, English, and French. But anyway, what I'm left with is a pretty good receiver. There's still something here I want to ask you about. This thing has got a switch down here. I think this is AFC. But I haven't seen any AFC on that circuit. And because of my uh, radio not having a front panel indication, I don't even know what that means. But let me see what we get on here. Can't stop at any music. This is at 88 and it's spot on there. Sounds great. Obviously my speakers have to sound great because this thing doesn't have speakers. Thank you. 
There's our 99. Very good uh, reception here. And that's that 100 football there. But, but yeah, this thing is receiving very, very well. Can't, I can't leave it on music. Bloody hell. This thing's receiving very, very well. And it is stereo FM. I guess um, that's more than obvious. I've actually tried to listen to the left and right. I can't really tell the difference. My speakers are top right, top left. Are they bringing me stereo sound? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> in a small space like this, you can very seldom tell. But the point is, this FM is working very well. I'm not going to make any more changes or alterations to it. I do believe this is some sort of AFC, and I really have ignored this till now because I just forgot about it. But it is one of the controls you have at the bottom. So perhaps you can tell me. And I think that's about it. I hope that this alignment, this is uh, by the book alignment because my logic is Saba is one of the best brands from the era. If, they, if their engineers decided to describe it like this, who am I to, to, to cut corners? Now, obviously, they would have had, uh, you know, test jigs that you just plug into that socket at the back there. They would have had the right tools to align that at the front. I'm sure they did a great job there. I'm not going to go and uh, second guess them. And uh, I think that the sound that I'm getting here, the reception I'm getting here, is on the top level of what I'm used to. That's about all I can say about it. And that's what I'm going to say about this uh, stage of this restoration to date. Whoa, it's been going on. Uh, this stage is, uh, pff, it's, it's easy to do. It's quite difficult to video and show and present and explain. But I hope that it serves a purpose. I hope that it helps at least one of you get one of these done. If it does, I've done my job and I'm very happy with that. So for now, I'm going to sign off. Uh, the last video in the series will be probably a few little things that I might have skipped on here and the cabinet. I still don't know what to do with the cabinet. By the next time you see this radio on the screen, you'll know what I've decided. Probably the wrong decision, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon or PayPal. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.